Grayscale is a terrifying disease in this world that no one really understands. It's difficult to study something so contagious. The first person we see affected by Grayscale in Game of Thrones and in the books is Shireen Baratheon, Stannis' daughter. Even though it's stated it almost killed her when she contracted it as an infant, we don't learn of the severity of it until later. Half her cheek and her neck have calcified and turned hard as stone, even look and feel like it. The infected area has cracks all over it, so it leaves you looking pretty disfigured. It's mostly children who contract grayscale, and if they survive it, they just have to live with the scarring. People will fear you, but the infection has run its course and will no longer be contagious. It must be some kind of bacteria attacking these children, because grayscale is most common in cold, damp regions. Shireen was born and raised in Dragonstone, a small island off the coast of Westeros. It doesn't get more cold and damp in this place, except for the Iron Islands. This is a horrible place to live, and to make things worse, they got a grayscale problem too. Theon has a bunch of uncles who didn't make it very long, and one of his father's brothers, Harlon, who was actually the firstborn and heir to the Iron Islands, contracted grayscale as a boy. But like some of the other brothers, Harlon would die, and it would be Balon Greyjoy to rule. Shireen may be lucky, but she's described as being very sad. In a primitive world, where even the Macers don't know how to handle this disease, imagine how poorly this ten-year-old would be treated growing up. George Martin takes this further by describing her as an ugly girl aside from the rocky face. Beyond the wall, those inflicted are treated even worse. To prevent the disease from spreading, the young are killed. It's why they call it the Grey Death. Grayscale reacts very differently to adults. If someone grown does come in physical contact with a diseased child or another adult, it's best to immediately cut off the infected area, like an arm or leg. If the symptoms begin to show on another part of your body, then sorry pal, it's too late. It's all over. You know that you have grayscale when one of your extremities, like a finger or a toe, begin to go numb. That area will begin to turn gray and hard and the infection spreads. Once all your skin is as hard as stone and you've lost all sensation, the disease spreads inward. Your mouth is sealed shut, you become blind, and your organs begin to calcify. But adults do survive this. This whole experience doesn't cause the victim any pain. However, something strange happens to them. When it reaches the brain, they completely lose it and are referred to as stone men. Adults become mad for the rest of their lives, so not only can you not touch them, but they are also insane. A very scary combination. The only solution they found in Essos for this problem is to transport infected adults to an isolated area where they can live the rest of their lives together. We get to check this place out in the books, but they kinda changed it up for the show. Game of Thrones decided to call this region, where Tyrion is attacked, the Ruins of Valyria, which doesn't really make too much sense if you're a book reader. The ruins of Valyria are supposed to be impossible to travel through for an unknown reason. Everyone who travels here disappears, possibly due to boiling waters. How could a group of crazy people make it here? The people with great scale are transported to ruined settlements along the largest river in this world, a massive river called Rhoyne. This area is covered in a thick fog, making it something out of a zombie horror movie. This specific region of the Rhoyne is called the Soros, and it has a really cool backstory. A thousand years before the story begins, the Valyrian dragon lords were well on their way to conquering the world. They were letting the colonies under them handle the Rhoynar conquest. For 250 years, the Rhoynar held them off with their water magic. But something changed the game. They were able to kill three of the Valyrian's dragons after they united under a prince named Garin. This made Valyria focus all their wrath on Prince Garin and the rest of the Rhoynar. 300 dragons crushed them in this culminating battle. Like in Valyrian fashion, their cities were burned and ruined while their people were enslaved. They decided to make Prince Garin watch this all happen in a golden cage. He supposedly called down a curse that miraculously caused a flood to take out his enemies. The unnaturally thick fog that still lingers in this region is believed to be a result of Garin's curse. The ones who survived the flood were infected with grayscale. After this event, Volantis, one of the biggest cities in Essos, would send a ship three times a year to the Soros with provisions for the stone men, but also more infected ones to join their forced residents. Considering their situation, this is pretty merciful, because once they lose their mind, they can literally bring mankind to ruin. It's unfortunate that the Soros is no longer an inhabitable state after what the Dragonlords did to it. Tyrion mentions while sailing through, nothing any sane man would want to eat froze in these fogs. But the stone men aren't sane, so I guess it all works out. Why some of them decide to attack the boat Tyrion was traveling on isn't spelled out for us, but I don't think we need an explanation to why crazy people do crazy things. They could have been starving or had no motive at all, it doesn't really matter. Instead of traveling with Jorah, Tyrion at this point in the books is with characters Game of Thrones viewers would never have heard of. John Kynington, an exiled lord and former Hand to the Mad King. 
He's also with young man believed to be the dead son of Rhaegar Targaryen named Aegon VI, along with some people who are caring for them. While the boat went under something called the Bridge of Dream, three stone men leapt 40 feet and made it on board. Without any sensation left in their bodies, the fall didn't faze them, even though one of their legs shattered. After they got them off board, John Cunnington would be the one to get Grayscale instead of Jorah in the books. Game of Thrones sometimes combines these storylines. It's something they did pretty often with minor characters, and sometimes even with the bigger players. We still don't know John Cunnington's fate, but he has decided to keep it a secret. Something that can be very dangerous with all the traveling he's doing. Grayscale already sounds scary enough, but there is a more dangerous form called the Great Plague. It spreads throughout your body far quicker and doesn't make adults go mad. There's also no chance of survival if you're a child. If anyone gets it, they die. But if you are a child that once survived Grayscale like Shireen, you are now immune to the Great Plague. You can kind of compare it to chickenpox in that way, I guess. The Great Plague once hit Old Town in Westeros around 80 years ago, which killed half of the very populous city. Before King's Landing became the capital, Old Town was the largest and most populous city, so half their population gone is a massive loss. The ruler of Old Town at the time, Lord Quinton Hightower, took extreme measures to ensure the plague wouldn't spread outside the city walls. Leaving Old Town was forbidden and punishable by death. The gates and all the harbor's ships were burned. In the end, his precautions worked and the Great Plague ran its course. But you can imagine how non-infected citizens would feel trapped in the city with no escape. The survivors killed Quinton Hightower and his son the day after he called off the quarantine. I personally would much rather deal with the Great Plague than Grayscale. Who would want to watch themselves slowly go mad and remain contagious for the rest of their life? Jorah's cure in the show seemed a little too simple for a disease that no one had cured in the past. If all the greatest minds in history couldn't solve it, how would clumsy Samuel Tarly just slice off a thin layer like butter and save the day? I doubt John Cunnington's fate will be as joyous. If George Martin decides to write in a cure, which I doubt he will, I'll like to talk about it then. Thanks for watching this one guys, and I'll see y'all later.